Good morning, folks. We've got news on climate, cosmology, and Earth's ongoing magnetic excursion. You see lots of active regions here on the sun, so let's begin with our star over at spaceweathernews.com. And we find the last 24 hours with the coronal hole hitting central Earth-facing heliographic longitudes, we had no solar flares or eruptions of CMEs from the active regions, and the filaments have remained mostly quiet as well. Inclement planetary geometry solar forcing expected in the second half of the month. Let's go right to a climate article that appears to be a bit confused. After describing the 2019 setup that led to the heat in Australia's record fire season, they are now noticing that their greenhouse gas warming models actually limit one of the primary factors that would contribute to those heat anomalies. And at the same time, it's promoting convective action that leads to cold events. Their conclusion, greenhouse warming will lead to more events like 2019. If your brain is saying, wait a minute, yeah, it's not you with the problem. Folks, we have an outstanding paper here. Keeping in mind the 20 to 30 year heat lag of solar forcing on earthly temperature, they define the rise in solar activity earlier this century, double the climate model assumptions in terms of UV energy change. It plateaued in the second half of the 1900s, and now the sun is declining in energy output, they say, as of the year 2000. It's actually 2005, but they weren't counting particle forcing. Either way, that gives us just 5 to 15 years to see the end of the solar forcing heat lag. Excellent note on cosmology here as the official field literature review confirms that it's not supernova, but the ionized outflows and their sister inflows that determine the nature of active galactic nuclear feedback. It comes with another explanation for important galactic dynamics previously believed to be due to dark matter. Up next, folks, it's not really a huge deal to add just one more citation to Dr. Pierre-Marie Robitaille's long list of references, unless it's on metallic hydrogen. His paper is cited from the liquid surface sun aspect, and one of the authors is a Nobel Prize winner from Harvard. Even if you were to forget the rest of the long list citing Dr. Robitaille, just consider that people like Nobel laureates and godfathers of scientific subfields like Neil Ashcroft are starting to see the bigger picture are unable to deny the science presented by Dr. Robitaille. And folks, perhaps some of you could head over and let Not a Professor Dave know that this paper came out just a few days before his childish attack video. Now last but not least, an okay scientific article, but which plays Tom Schillery as well, running defense on the public panic concerning Earth's magnetic shift. Their auroral studies aren't bad, but I really doubt many of you needed a paper to tell you that solar storm effects would change during a magnetic field shift. The key is the first line and premise of their study, the same nonsense number MIT gives when they run defense, 9% of the field lost since the 1800s, the past 150 years. Well, the problem is that data clearly shows that back in the year 2000, we were already down about 10% in the field. Then, Ten years later, the ESA's SWARM mission updated that number to 15%. A few years later, no new number was given, but the head of the mission said the trend is continuing, the magnetic poles are getting ready to flip, and said that we had gone from losing 5% of the field per century in the 1900s to 5% per decade now. That would put us at least down at 20%, since it's been a decade since the ESA said 15 and then we must remember that there was another acceleration in 2017 over the Pacific sector. Folks, I'm not sure if it's all about abating panic or something else, but we see many top journals and MIT go against the data we've seen come out over the last two decades. Best guess is that in truth we are 20 to 25% down in the field right now, and accelerating. Folks, we have selected three of the four winners of our campground design contest, but you will select the fourth. It is one day voting only, right now. No recounts, Dominion voting machines, mail-in ballots, or unconstitutional extensions of the process will be allowed. Head over to observatoryproject.com and the campground page, which is in your link list today as well. Vote for which is your favorite of the five. Our three and your viewer's choice will be announced tomorrow. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe because we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.